fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. A finger on the trail ahead. Lou Gorman was in jail. The law intended to keep him there for at least 20 years. But Gorman had other plans. For weeks, he had been awaiting to get one guard on duty. One particular guard whom he thought he could outwit. Finally, his big chance came. He knew that vigilance was somewhat relaxed, and that aside from the man on duty in the room outside the cell, there were no other guards. Hey, guard! Hey, you! Quiet right down there, Gorman. I got nothing to say to you. Come here. I want to tell you something. I'll make it short, then. What is it you want to say? I'm jailed for smoking. That's a story, isn't it? Oh, no, doggone well it is. Oh, wait. Don't go away. Let me finish. I got no time to listen to such rot. I heard some men talking outside my window. He said there was still plenty of drugs being brought over the border. Well, at least you're not sharing in the profits. No, but don't that prove something? What? Don't you see? Don't it prove when they framed a case against me? I you was... weren't framed, Gordon. You were convicted on plenty of evidence. I still claim I was framed. It's an innocent man doing this jail term. The fact that the smuggler still goes on proves it. It don't prove anything of the yeah, sort. Yeah, but it... It proves that you had such a slick, well-greased, smooth-working organization build up that... Well, it's going right on working, even if you're not there to lead it. All right, that settles it. Settles what? I see I've got to break down and use my last resource. I didn't want to do it, but God, you're a man. You can savvy what it means to look ahead to the rest of your life in jail. You deserve all you get. It'd be bad enough if I was guilty of smuggling. But being innocent, I just can't stand it. <laughs> you're as innocent as a man at Chad Lincoln. Oh, God, you misjudge me like everyone else. Is that all you had to tell me? God, let me ask you. Isn't there still smuggling the drugs over the border? Yeah. Then don't that prove I wasn't the one that was doing it? Well, it proves there are still smugglers we haven't caught. That's all it proves. You didn't find anyone that could identify me as a smuggler. Now, look here, Gorman. If you'd been more in the open, we'd have had evidence that'd hang you. We know how you kept away in the background making plans and things without letting most of your own gang know who you were. We got you dead to rights with smuggled drugs in your possession. Good, I'm going to take a long chance. I'd likely be killed for squealing, but it's better than to stand here to rot in jail. I'll give you the name of the real head of the smugglers. The one that framed me for the crimes. You can't refuse to take the name and investigate. Here, come close now. Write it down for you. You know, nothing could amaze me more than to find that you're telling the truth. Here, God. Let me take your pencil. I'll write it out here. All right, I'll... Oh, got gotcha. you. All right, I'll hit it, fool. You can't close the bar so I get a hold of you. A minute, you'll be unconscious. And I'll just help myself to your keys and to my freedom. <laughs> be more than one black market can me. What do I care as long as I can have my freedom? The 
The next day, an Indian raced across the plains at the top speed of his powerful paint horse. He reined up at a ranch house, shouted to the open door. Hi! When a man appeared, he cried out, Luke Gorman, him get out of jail. Luke Gorman, him escape. You spread word. Get him up, scout. <laughs> On he raced, heading south, pausing only long enough in each community to spread the news. He on guard. Lou Gorman out of jail. Him break out last night. Get him up, scout. Farm and ranch, through town and village, rode Tonto, the Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, to warn everyone that a killer was at large. Get him up, scout. Get him up. miles from where the prisoner had been captured and jailed, a girl named Sally Marker heard the news. She hurried home to tell her mother. That's the truth, Ma. Oh, Sally. Gorman out of jail after all the trouble to put him there. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Mother. We've got an extra special reason to want Gorman sent back to pay in full for his crimes. I know, dear. He killed Paul. That was never proved. No, but we know he killed him. Paul was the sheriff and he was almost ready to smash the whole gang of smugglers that Lou Gorman was working with. When he was killed. Yes, dear, but... The new uh, sheriff here doesn't even know what Gorman looks like. Gorman was captured and jailed a long ways from here. I don't think any of the lawmen around here know him by sight. I don't know him myself, Sally. All right. But I think I know where to find him. You? Yes. Remember, Mom, I was with Paul when he died. Oh, yeah. Well, he told me something. He said that Gorman's smuggler gang had their headquarters near here. And he said that Gorman had a hideout not far from town. Gorman did? Well, what for? Well... Gorman didn't have much to do with the rest of the smugglers. He had a hideout and worked from there. A hideout? Yes. You see, the boss of the gang used Gorman as a sort of spy to be sure none of the gang tried to double-cross. Gorman went to this hideout for his orders. And I'll bet he'll go there now. It's a cave a few miles from town. Sally, this isn't anything that you should mix into. But, Mom, the new sheriff won't know about the hideout. He won't know Gorman when he sees him. I've got to tell him about it. And I've got to hurry or Gorman will be there and gone. Now, I wonder who that can be. Howdy, Miss Marker. Why, Miss Pringle. You mind if I step in? How are you, Sally? All right. Do come in with a Prindle. My sakes alive, did you hear the news? That smuggler named Gorman that was in jail in Amaranth is out and running wild. Yes, we heard about it. I thought of you ladies first thing I heard of it. You did? Oh, there was talk that Gorman was the one who shot your husband, Miss Marker. That's the truth. But there never was any proof of it. Oh, my, my, I do hope he don't come here to get you two. Do you know anything that'd be dangerous to him? Not very much. I mean, um... Well, you know what Gorman looks like, don't you? Neither Sally or I know him on sight. Oh. Well, then, maybe he won't have any reason to do any murders here. I'm glad of it. I'd hate to think he'd head right for here and start shooting people. I'm going now, Mom. Uh, you going someplace, Sally? I want to talk to the sheriff. The sheriff? He's not around. He isn't? No. Sheriff and his deputies left town to hunt for Gorman. Mrs. Prindle, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I helped put up the food for the sheriff to take along with him. He plans to be gone for two, maybe three days. Oh, Sally, you might as well sit down and wait for him to come back. But, Mom, it'll be too late then. Gorman will have come and gone. There's only one thing to do. No, 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 Sally, please. I've got to. I'll take Pa's old shooting arm in case I need it. Oh, Mrs. Prindle, I'm worried. What was the girl talking about? Her father told her about some cave near here. It's a place that Gorman used to use as a hideout. Oh, she thinks Gorman will go there. Oh, but uh, why should he go there? That's if just the place is known. <gasps> Just this Sally's the only one who knows about it. She wanted to take the sheriff there, but he's out of town. What would Gorman go there for? Oh, I don't know, but if he is there, and Sally alone, I hate to think of what might happen. The widow Prindle left the house and hurried home. There she called a man named Jenks, and her manner changed to one of flinty hardness. I found out that the girl did get told a few things by her old man, Jenks. She knows about the cave. She does, huh? Yes, and she's going there now. If she gets there, she's likely to find Gorman. I'll get there pronto. Tell Gorman to wait there till we send further orders. Right. And see that the girl's tied and kept there with him. I have to think over what to do about her. 
She knows too much. But, boss, I don't know Gorman when I see him. Well, you fool, if there's a tall, bearded man there, it'll be Gorman, won't it? Who else knows of the place? I'll get there fast. The opening of the cave a few miles from town was hidden by dense underbrush. One could pass within three feet and never notice. Sally reined up in the nearby trees and... Oh, oh, there. That's where the cave is. The place where I used to play when I was a little girl would become the hideout of... Sally's thoughts broke off abruptly when she caught sight of a horse, ground hitched beyond the fringe of trees that grew near the opening of the cave. He's in there. If only I can get the drop on him. Drawing the heavy forty-four her father used to carry, the girl crept softly toward the bushes. She made barely a sound as she parted the dense growth and forced her way toward the well-hidden opening. She didn't know that every move she made was watched by the tall man who crouched just inside the cave. And suddenly... Bastille. Oh. Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, it's Lou Gorman. You are Lou Gorman. Why did you come here? Because I... I came to capture you. And the sheriff's men are right behind me. You might as well surrender. The sheriff's men... How did they know? Surrender and give me your guns. Better take that gun of yours before you start shooting. Now, talk quickly. Be sure you tell me the truth. Who are you and why are you here? Gorman, you killed my father. You're going to pay for it this time. Twenty years in jail wasn't bad enough for you. I hope you do kill me. The sheriff's men can close in then and they'll hang you for it. If you don't kill me, you'll have to shoot it out with them. The sheriff is nowhere near here. But he... I'm sorry, but I'll have to tie you up. You, You hear the horse coming, don't you? Better get ready to shoot it out. I think this rope will hold you for the time being. I'm not concerned about the sheriff's men. I know where they are. All right. Everything's clear. Come on in. Good. I had a visitor before you came, oh, and I... Carter, huh? I came here to warn you that she was on the way. Jinx. So you're one of the gang. Oh, it's too bad you had to find it out, Miss Sally. Because now you're too dangerous to us to go free. Did you bring any instructions? Yeah, she ought to wait here until tonight. Then I'll come with more orders for you. The girl's to be kept here, too, and kept rope so that she can't get away. You watch out for her. You know, her old man was a sheriff. Yes. And they say that she's almost as smart as he was. Well, there's no need for me to stay here as long as you got the girl a prisoner. I, uh, I want to see the boss. I don't know about that, Gorman. You tell the boss to come here tonight. I've spent a lot of time in jail, and I'm going to be paid for it. I'll pass the word. See that you do. Right. Now I'll shove on. Oh, uh... You needn't worry about the sheriff. He's away out on the plains looking for you. <laughs> I'm not worried. I'm downright sorry about you, Miss Sally. I'd sooner see almost anyone else in that fix. Save your sympathy. You'll need it someday for yourself. Well, there's room for an argument there, but I ain't got the time now. Keep a close watch on her, Gorman. I will. So long. Well, you've gotten yourself into a fine mess. I've learned that Jenks is one of the gang, and I've learned that he knows the boss. Just wait till I tell that to the law. You think you'll have a chance? My pa was a sheriff. He told me a few things about dealing with crooks. One of those things was to keep a spare gun hidden. You made a mistake when you tied my hands in front of me instead of in back. Here's a small gun I had in my blouse. Now get your hands up here covered. I was going to untie you anyway. I'll go ahead with my plan. Never mind. After I've shot you, I'll get your knife. Sally, listen to me. Lou Gorman was captured an hour after he escaped. That's a likely story. It's the truth. He's back in jail right now. and He'll be guarded so he'll never have another chance to escape. Go on. Sounds funny. The recapture of Gorman was kept a secret so I could come here. I posed as Lou Gorman in the hope of capturing more of his gang. That's a slick story. But it won't go with me. Mr. Gorman, say your prayers quick. Because this six-gun is going to speak with hot lead. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Outside the smuggler's cave, Sally Marker held a gun point blank on the tall, bearded man who stood before her. So you can get ready to face your maker. I'm giving you a shot in the chest, not a shot in the back like Pawhead. Sally, I've told you that Lou Gorman, the real Lou Gorman, is in jail. I don't believe it. Did your father tell you about this cave, this hiding place of the gang? Yes. He told me about it, too. Did, uh, did he ever tell you about a horse called Silver and the man who rode him? Silver? The man who usually wore a mask and fired bullets that were made of silver? Yes. Yes, he did. But you have no mask. This beard's a disguise. I saw the horse. The white horse. Wait. Now listen. Here, Silver. If I call again, he'll break his tether and come here on the run. Then... Then you are the Lone Ranger. Yes, I am. Oh, you're the one... Pa told me about you. I'm going to untie you, Sally. Then we've got to get you away from here. If Jenks comes back, he'll have instructions to kill you. But what about you? You have to tell some sort of a story about your escape. Now, there's one thing you must do. You've got to wait until after dark before you go into town. And then slip into your home quietly so no one will know that you're there. All right. We don't know who really heads a smuggling gang. Might be almost anyone in town. You're sure the head man is in town? The government men who have been working on the case are sure of it. Everything points to it. Maybe it's Jenks. Yeah, might be. He kept speaking of the boss, but that might be nothing but a dodge. He himself might be the brain. That's one thing we want to find out. Let me help. You can help most by doing what I've asked. Oh, what if I'd shot you? I don't think you'd have really fired. I would, if I could get the drop on the snake that shot my father. Oh, if I only knew who it was. Gorman? I thought Gorman planned it, but I wasn't sure whether he was the one who did the actual shooting. If Gorman isn't the real leader of the gang, it might be someone else. Now you'd better get away from here. I will, but... What can you tell Jenks when he comes back tonight? I'll think of something. If I could help you by staying here. No, no, please go. Perhaps if I made believe I was still the prisoner. Made believe I was tied until Jenks came and went. No, you've got to get away. Now go. All right. I'll go. But I want to help if I can. Sally Marker rode slowly toward the town, Jenks reported to the boss who made all the plans for the smuggling gang. And you listen here, Widow Prindle. That Sally Marker girl is going to be dangerous if something's not done about it. So it seems. Just like an old man. What's the answer? She doesn't suspect me, does she? I don't know how she could. I was afraid something would have to be done when I called at her house earlier in the day. I had a hunch all along she knew about that cave. Garmin went there, all right. Yeah, I thought he would. Gorman's a good man, but he's got to be told just what to do. He's there now? Yes, I'd never seen him no, before. No, I know it. He's a smooth talking number. He sure is. I wonder if he could take Sally over the border. Why not? She could be disposed of there easier than around here. Well, I'll tell him. It's too bad, but that's what'll have to be done. I'm sorry for Miss Marker. It'll be a blow to her. Not going soft-hearted, are you? Me, soft-hearted? Not on your life. Now, what about getting Gorman over the water? He's got to be got there, and tonight at that. I want him safe on the other side before the sheriff and his posse get back. Well, what are the orders? Uh, have him slip into town around midnight. There'll be a man with papers and change of clothes waiting in the shadow of the livery stable. He'll get the clothes and the papers and the place to meet the rest of the boys when he gets south of the border. Is that clear? Yes, I'll tell him. Shadow of the livery stable at midnight. I'll tend to the rest. Good enough. I'll be over at the marker house tonight, eh? Told Miss Marker I'd spend the evening with her. <laughs> She's afraid Lou Gorman might stop to call on her. <laughs> and fearing Lou Gorman, she entertains his boss right in her own house. That's a good one. I sure got to hand it to you, Widow Prindle. Now get moving. I'm going to Marker's house. <laughs> you came, Miss Brindle. Sally's just been telling me the most amazing thing. We've had all her worry for nothing. Sally? Yes, I know such a day as I've had. <laughs> I'd like to hear about it. Well, for a time, I thought I'd been made a prisoner by Lou Gorman. But then I learned the truth. Gorman was recaptured by the law. There's another man posing as him. Think of that, Miss Brindle. Uh, uh, you say there's a, another man posing as Gorman? Yes. He's trying to find out more about the smuggling gang. And who do you think he is? Uh, who? You'd never guess in a hundred okay. years. Well, no, who is it? It's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Yes. I mustn't let anyone know about it, so don't say a word, will you, Mrs. Uh, Pendle? 
Oh, no. No, of course not. I'm that relieved to think that Gorman is back in the jail where he belongs. Now, if only the rest of the gang can be caught. Sally, uh, how do you know for sure the man's Lone Ranger? The horse. That's one of the reasons. The horse named Silver. And the way he spoke. And the fact that he let me go, knowing he'd have to account to Jenks when he got back. There's another thing, Miss Brindle. Just imagine. Jenks is one of that gang. <laughs> it, uh, it mightn't be good judgment to let on you know it. Oh, Sally won't be the word until the sheriff gets back in town. Uh, Sally, what the Lone Ranger look like? Oh, I couldn't see his face because of the false beard he wore. But he had nice eyes and the nicest way of talking. And he was broad-shouldered. Oh, oh, mercy me. Mercy for goodness. What's the matter? I do declare I just remember to come away and left the bacon in the oven with the fire going. I've got to hurry right home. Bacon? Do you bake at night? Well, I, I had a good fire in the stove and I, I thought I'd do some bacon while the oven was hot. I have to run along right away. Uh, Sally, why don't you walk over with me and then we'll come back later. All right, Mrs. Prindle. You won't be long. I know. Hmm? You come too, Miss Marker. We'll spend what's left of the evening at my place. I've got some recipes I'd like to show you. Well, I don't know the night air. Oh, come on, Mom. Oh, you come. Well, all right. I suppose to be a nice change. <laughs> I left a lamp lighted in the window there. I see you did, Miss Brindle. I always feel funny going into a house where there's no light. Here we are. Now step right in and make yourself at home. After you, Mom. I do declare. It's the first time in ages that I've been out after dark. There, now set right down. Oh, thank you. I'll be back in just a minute. I wish you could have seen the Lone Ranger, Mom. Gee, with him out to get the leader of that gang, what... Sally, dear, please don't talk about the smugglers. I... I'll never forget the sight of your poor father when he was brought home because he tried to wipe out that gang. I'm sorry, Mom, but I do so want to see the work Pa started finished up. It makes me feel glad to know that a man like the Lone Ranger's on our side. There they are, Scar. You two are in for the surprise of your life. Meet Scar Fenner and Red Mason. There's no use of you two starting a rumpus because if you do, we'll have to gag you. Scar, Red. Who are these men? Friends of Lou Gorman and friends of Jenks. Gorman? Jenks. And friends of mine. Trusted friends of mine. Get ropes on them, Red. You mean you, Mrs. Prindle. The boss says we're not to hurt you unless you start yelling. Now I see. Maud Pringle, you're the leader of the smugglers. Well, you had to find it out sometime. Well, you smooth-talking, simpering old cat. You're to blame for the death of my father. And you'll be lucky if you don't follow him before you're done. Now save your breath and be quiet while the boys tie you. And we told Hurry you... Hurry it up, Scar. We've got to tell James that it's the Lone Ranger he's got in tow when he goes over to the Lone Ranger. <coughs> this won't take long. Like fun, it won't. Here, hold it. I'm not getting tired without a fight. She slipped away. Grab the rat. You won't <laughs> I don't know how the boss will take it, you letting that girl escape. Yeah, he'll find out. What am I to do when we get to the livery stable? Well, there'll be a man there with another outfit of clothes, and he'll take you over the border. The boss wants you to work south of the border now, where it'll be safe from the law on this side. All right. Hey. What's the matter? Look over there in the shadows of the livery stable. What do you see? Several men. What about it? Well, it looks like there's been a change in the plans. I thought there was to be just one man there. Be able to have company when I ride south. It looks so. There they come. That's Carl Laughlin's voice. Hi there, Scar. Bring him in here, Jenks. Yes, I got here last. Fred, you here too? He's here and so others of the outfit. What's up? Get off that horse, mister. <coughs> well, that's trouble. So you're supposed to be Luke Gorman. That's Jinx here. Sure he is, Scar. Yeah. You never knew Gorman, did you, James? No, I never seen him before. Well, I have, and this man's different. He's no more Lou Gorman than I am. But I thought... What about the was... prisoner he had? Where is she? I told Jinx about never her. Never mind going over that again. We've got work to do, and the sooner it's done, the better. But, Scott, what the Sam... Well, he told me. us all about this, hombre. You know who he is? I thought he was He's Gorman. the Lone Ranger. What? That's right, Jinx. That's who he is. Go on, you. Try and deny it. Well, you haven't heard me deny it, have you? And you wouldn't get far if you did. But where's Gorman? Back Why, in I... the jail. Why, this whole thing is a trap to get us. But we found out about it in time. If this critter had been able to go through with his plans, he'd have had the lot of us and all the evidence he wanted. 
Law would have put us all in company with Lou Gorman. In jail? Why, do you mean to so say now that... that you know who I am, I suppose you'll give me the same as Sheriff Marker got. That's what you've got coming. But, Scar, what about that girl, Sally Marker? He let her escape, and she knows that I'm one of the gang. She and her ma are tied up in the boss's house right now. They're going to be taken on a long trip. I hope the girl didn't tell anyone else. Thanks. You think I'm here alone? No. you got the company of all of us. Let me get a crack at him. That's Sally. How did she get out? Sally, Sally, come back here. I'll show those killers. She's shooting. Then shoot back. No, you don't. Oh, no. no, take charge. Closing, boys. Go on and get him. Mr. Right. Sheriff. Come get on. hands up. Not while I can fight it. Now no. what you're told. Good work, Lone Ranger. That's two of them you smacked down with your fist. Rest you throw down your guns and get your hands up. We heard the whole thing. We was in the livery stable ever since Tano told us who the boss of the smugglers was. Thanks. Get on your feet. You see, Tano followed you from the time you left me in the cave. The sheriff was hidden and waiting for Tano to report. He didn't leave the town at all. Nope. I was waiting to close in as soon as the gang was rounded up. Oh, if only I could have drilled a couple of them. Tano, this girl should have uh, come here. And me go to house. Deputy capture boss woman. Me untie girl. Untie mother. Girl, grab gun. Come here and run. I, I was afraid they'd kill you. Thanks, Sally. You certainly would have saved my life. Sally McPhilla. <laughs> Sheriff, you have the gang now. You'll find a lot of smuggled goods in the widow's house. Yep. We'll have all the evidence we need to say nothing of the confessions and admissions we overheard and the threat again Mrs. Marker and Sally. Why, there's enough to jail a peck of them for life from 20 years left over. <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.